Welcome to the video guide for the Flashy Science Tensile Test Experiment. On the screen you'll see a tensile test machine, or a test frame or tensometer, which consists of three main areas. On the left is a dial that shows the force or load applied to samples. In the middle are the upper and lower sample jaws that hold a sample during measurement. And on the right hand side is the strain control panel, which is used to apply strain to samples. If you're not sure what strain and stress mean, then see our background information associated with this experiment on our website. First of all, we need a sample. To see the samples, click on the lower sample jaws and you'll move to this screen that shows five samples of different materials and each of random width. The materials are one, steel, two, copper, three, an aluminium alloy, four, Kevlar, a composite material, and five, a glass. Of course, each type of material has different tensile properties, so a different level of stress is required to stretch them by a certain amount initially, and they respond differently to higher levels of stress. Before we put a sample into the tensile test frame, we need to measure its width using these vernier calipers that are also on the screen. First, click and drag the lower jaw of the calipers to create a space that is wider than the sample you wish to choose. Then click and drag the sample of your choice towards the calipers until it snaps into place against the left hand caliper's jaw. Then click and drag the movable part of the calipers again until it's closed tightly against the sample. This is shown by the green and white confirm button appearing in the top left of the screen. Now you can use the vernier scale to measure the sample width. If you're not sure how to do this, then see our instructions and you can also use our vernier calipers experiment to test your knowledge of using this equipment and check you're operating it correctly. I can return this sample to its original position by opening the jaws again and clicking and dragging the sample back to where it started from. Then I might want to choose a different sample, so this must be placed in the calipers again and the jaws closed around it once more. The sample in the calipers can now be placed in the main screen by clicking on the confirm button. There, you can see the sample is between the upper and lower jaws of the tensometer, and we can now start to test its tensile properties, which we do with the strain control panel. First of all, we click on the power button to turn the panel on, and you'll see that the display lights up. We have two zeros at the moment. The upper number shows the change in strain each time we apply a strain step. It's zero at the moment, but we'll change that shortly. The lower number shows the actual value of strain that the sample is under. It's zero now because we haven't done anything to the sample yet. To change the step size of strain, first click on the set button and the top value then starts to flash. Then we use the keypad to put in a number. So there we are, a one and a zero. Then click the set button again to lock that number into place as the strain increment or strain step. We can then apply that step by pressing the up arrow and you can see that the actual sample strain increases by the step amount each time I press the up button. On the left hand side you'll see that the dial arrows have also changed position and of course they're showing the load or force applied to the sample. The greater the strain the greater the load required. The red arrow shows kilonewtons and the black arrow is 10 times slower basically so it shows tens of kilonewtons. So at the moment we're applying just over 2.6 kilonewtons of force to the sample and the sample is under 0 0.0006 strain or 0.06% strain. We can keep increasing the strain, going through the elastic region and into the plastic region. And we can decrease the strain as well by clicking on the down button in order to look at strain relaxation and how the force reduces as we decrease strain. We can use this to look at plastic deformation and work hardening. We can also take the material right through its plastic region to look at its UTS and fracture. 
I'm going to enter a large number now as the strain increment to demonstrate fracture. As I now increase strain, you can see larger forces being applied to the sample. But as I continue increasing the strain further, you'll see the force starting to decrease again due to sample necking behavior. And eventually the sample fractures. There we are, it is broken and the force is now at zero again. In a real experiment, we may have recorded all of these data points and you can download a spreadsheet for doing this on this experiment from our website. You may now wish to put in a new sample. To do this, turn off the strain control panel and then click on the lower jaws and you'll be back on the sample select screen to choose between the five different materials again. The samples now have different widths than before, so you will need to measure the width of the sample you want to investigate in the tensometer, just as before. So, it might be sample three this time. I put it in the calipers, close the caliper jaws around it, measure its width with the vernier scale, and then click on the confirm button. And the sample is now placed in the tensometer, ready for strain to be applied to it. The experiment also has additional functionality that you can access via this icon in the top left of the screen. This opens a menu with five more icons. The first icon simply closes the menu again. The second icon returns you to the experiment when you're on a question screen. And we'll come to those shortly. The third is the click information icon. Clicking this will highlight all of the areas on the screen that can be clicked to control the experiment. The fourth icon opens up a screen of questions directly related to the experiments you might have just performed. The final icon opens up revision questions that cover the area of tensile testing more generally. All questions are automatically answered and many contain randomly generated numbers so you can retake them as many times as you like for practice. So you can explore all sorts of tensile properties of materials with this flashy science experiment. We very much hope you enjoy using it.